The main obstacle in mechanical augmentation was finding the perfect interface between man and machine. While external prosthetics can be made from hypoallergenic materials, there was no such luxury when implanting devices in the brain. Early augmentation projects addressed human disease such as Parkinson's disease, where patients had metal electrodes inserted into their brains to stop the tremors. While successful, the unfortunate side effects of using stiff metal electrodes was their vulnerability to impacts caused by bodily movements. This caused tissue injury and compromised the device's effectiveness. In 2002, Darrow Industries made a breakthrough that would revolutionize augmentations. They pioneered the PDOT cluster array to create a biocompatible matrix device known as the Biochip. The basis of the Biochip was to use the PDOT, an organic conducting polymer for the electrodes which were attached to artificial neurons grown specifically for the device. The entire biochip would then be implanted into the host's brain and, because of the PDOT cluster's entirely organic structure and its neuron-to-neuron -neuron interface, would be less prone to side effects. However, the biochips still suffered from glial tissue buildup around the PDOT cluster, which is detectable by elevated levels of cytotoxic M and DDSY enzymes in the matrix. Not only did this compromise the effectiveness of the biochip, but it could also lead to rejection known as Darrow Deficiency Syndrome. To prevent this, augmented individuals had to take neuropazine, which broke down the buildup of glial tissue. Even with all the groundbreaking advancements into mechanical augmentations, there remained a very small percentage of the population whose bodies would still reject them due to being genetically incompatible. Among these people was the father of mechanical augmentations himself, Hugh Darrow. To help with this, Darrow Industries published the first genetic compatibility test in 2011 to determine if an individual's body would accept or reject augmentations. By the 2020s, many biotech companies existed all over the world and were helping to advance mechanical augmentations, making them commonplace but still controversial in society. One such company, Saraf Industries, which had been founded in 2007 and had quickly grown to become one of the major biotech companies by 2027, was on the verge of a breakthrough. Despite it being over 20 years since the first biochip had been developed, nobody had yet figured out how to prevent the glial tissue buildup that ultimately led to the rejection if neuropazine wasn't taken. This all changed when Saraf Industries head researcher Megan Reed created the X1 biochip prototype with her team. Unlike previous biochips, the X1 biochip's PDOT cluster incorporated a mutagenic chemical composition that was isolated from the DNA strands of patient X. After six weeks of testing against a regular biochip, the team discovered that not only did the X1 biochip have no noticeable glial tissue buildup, but it also appeared to strengthen its neural connections, meaning neuropazine would no longer be necessary. However, mechanical augmentation was still a controversial subject in society, with people evenly split on pushing for or against them. Due to this, Reed and her team were scheduled to present and defend their research on the X1 biochip in Washington DC in 2027. If successful, they could pave the way for everyone to be safely augmented with no drawbacks. Unfortunately, the night before they were due in Washington DC, Saraf Industries headquarters was attacked and Reed and her team kidnapped, though it was made to look like they had been killed. As a result, their findings never went public. While many legitimate biotech companies like Saraf Industries and presumably Isolay and Kaidin Global developed mechanical augmentations using standard research procedures, some companies like Taiyong Medical conducted illegal and inhumane experiments on detainees and kidnapped civilians. With help from Versalife, Taiyong Medical used the black site Rifleman Bank Station for ongoing research into the Hiron project. Detainees were experimented on against their will and, if found compatible, operated on to such an extent that even if they survived the surgery, they would typically die within a year once connected to the Hiron. Anyone who was not compatible with the Hiron project was sent to another black site, Omega Ranch, which was owned by Hugh Darrow. Here, further experiments were carried out, with the subjects ultimately dying from various complications. Saraf Industries' kidnapped scientists had been taken here 
and using Reed's research, made to work on a biochip that would limit the abilities of augmented people. After the org incident in 2027, the UN took advantage of the crisis and passed the Taggart Act, which strictly regulated and restricted the mechanical augmentation industry. This act, combined with the aftermath of the org incident, caused nearly every biotech company to collapse except for Taiyong Medical, allowing the Illuminati-backed company to finally absorb all the rest. Near the end of 2028, the company announced a dampening chip that would make org safe again. Meanwhile, one of Taiyong Medical's former scientists, Vadim Orlov, helped develop several experimental augmentations like the Nanoblade projectile slash explosive upgrade, Tesla, and Titan Shield before leaving the company. By the 2050s, many mechanical augmentations had been developed into smaller devices such as implants that would release steroids or prosthetics that replace small limb parts. By 2052, clinics offered augmentations, but extensive mechanical augmentation hinted to replace as much as 90% of the human body had become rare and expensive to maintain. It's believed that sometime between 2029 and 2052, a cure was finally made publicly available to prevent DDS and neuropazine is no longer needed. With the emergence of nano-augmentations in the 2050s, mechanical augmentation was on its way to becoming obsolete, and by 2072 it was completely replaced by nano-augmentation. By the 2020s, a social rift began to emerge between augmented and non-augmented citizens. While mechanical augmentation had become widespread, there was still a significant opposition to it that believed that technology could be abused despite the apparent benefits it brought. Additionally, black markets started to arise around mechanical augmentations in the form of illegal clinics and unlicensed or stolen augmentations. Harvesters became known and feared for kidnapping orgs off the street and then harvesting their augmentations to put on the black market, often killing the victim in the process. Several prominent people advocating against the use of augmentations, including William Taggart, the head of Humanity Front, Ezekiel Sanders, the head of the radical organization Purist First. While these two individuals had personal reasons for denouncing augmentations, few realized Taggart was actually pushing the Illuminati's views as, with the change in societal order that comes with technological advancement, it meant losing control over the masses. However, the Illuminati was secretly working on plans so they could control augmented people with a modified biochip, allowing them to limit an augmented person's abilities when needed. In 2027, tensions continued to build with Sarif Industries being attacked twice in six months and William Taggart's assistant killed by an augmented faction, which was secretly orchestrated by the Illuminati to push the UN to consider regulations on augmentations. This all came to head when Picus, an Illuminati-controlled corporation, released satellite footage claiming to be images of torturous experiments being performed on augmented super-soldiers. This, in turn, caused widespread rioting around the world, with many of it concentrated around biotech companies like Sarif Industries. With the world in chaos over mechanical augmentations, the Illuminati had the World Health Organization do a recall, claiming recent glitches were being caused by a malfunctioning biochip. In reality, they were intentionally causing them so the augmented individuals would have their biochips replaced with a modified version that would allow the Illuminati to control them. Seeing how this intervention drastically changed the world and being called on to say something in all the ensuing chaos, Hugh Darrow finally came forth to speak and invited hundreds of notable people to Panchea, including David Saraf and William Taggart. Despite being an Illuminatus, Darrow went against the group's intentions and, on live TV, broadcasted a signal that caused those with the modified biochip to go crazy and start attacking and killing everyone around them. By the time his signal was shut down, the damage had already been done, with 50 million people dead and countless others injured. After the signal was shut down, Panchea collapsed under the ocean's pressure and all information on the signal was either obscured or destroyed. This allowed the Illuminati to spin the media to blame orcs for all the deaths, and the world began to move against them after what became known as the Org Incident. By 2028, cities that once welcomed orcs like Prague had started to discriminate and treat them like second-class citizens by requiring them to have travel papers and permits, go through additional security checkpoints, ride separate trains, and in some cases, 
be denied business services. Many could not afford the cost of acquiring their permits and, as a result, org ghettos started to spring up, like Prague's Golem City and Dresden's Glashut, where poverty and poor living conditions were rampant, police brutality was a common sight, and neuropocene supplies were kept artificially low to control the org population. This caused the formation of several org rights groups, with the largest faction being the Augmented Rights Coalition led by Talas Rucker. Originally formed before the incident to help newly augmented people adjust, it reorganised itself to peacefully protest the violations against orgs around the world. Despite this, many anti-org groups claimed ARC was a terrorist organisation and blamed them for several attacks. It did not help matters when Rucker moved into Golem City itself, making it the de facto headquarters for ARC, which many saw as a move to recruit embittered members prone to causing more attacks against the non-augmented. In early 2029, things became more heated when the Illuminati, through a series of carefully orchestrated events, caused several augmented terrorist attacks within the span of a few days, including using augmented children as bombs and the kidnapping of well-known anti-org reporter Titus King. Fueled by these actions, they had their politicians push for the UN to consider United Nations Resolution 3507, better known as the Human Restoration Act, which called for the removal or downgrading of unlicensed or overly powered augmentations. It also wanted to push for orgs to have to carry official papers about their augmentations and be required to have a control chip implanted. If any individual refused, they were to be removed and put into a segregated housing facility. To try to make sure it passed, the Illuminati implanted a mole, Viktor Marchenko, into ARC to frame the group for a wave of terrorist attacks. Secretly using some resentful ARC members that wanted to take action, Marchenko had them attack several areas in Prague, including bombing Rizika Station. Rucker, who had suspected the power struggle within the organisation was being caused by the attackers, had started to investigate and found evidence someone within ARC was trying to undermine their peaceful approach, but before he could learn more, he was killed by Marchenko under the Illuminati's orders. With nobody else in the way, Marchenko then took over ARC. However, the Illuminati felt that they needed one final push, so they turned their attention towards the well-known billionaire Nathaniel Brown, who was a strong advocate against the Human Restoration Act and, unlike Rucker, had the power and money to prevent it from passing. Brown, intent on swaying UN members to say no to the act, decided to hold a conference known as the Safe Harbour Initiative in London. When the Illuminati learned of the time and place where it was being held, they had Marchenko infiltrate the building using their augmented soldiers to try to kill Brown and the UN delegates. With the emergence of nanotechnological augmentation, mechanical augmentation started to become obsolete. Similar to the social divide in the 2020s between non-augmented and augmented people, a rift was forming between nano-augmented and mechanically augmented individuals due to the latter's inability to blend in with others and thus rejected by society, while nano-augmented were not due to their augmentations being discreet. That concludes the known history of the advent and integration of human augmentations technology within the Deus Ex universe. With this foreknowledge, we can move on with taking in-depth looks at the augmentations available within the Deus Ex universe, and just how far off such augmentations really are in a real-world sense. So look forward to that in the coming dives into the Deus Ex core. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider hitting the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Be sure to like the video if you did, and pop a comment below on what you'd like me to cover next. I just want to take a moment to thank my patrons, Spartan10148, the Metarch of my facility, Falcon, Sylphia, Mikhail, Ashley, Jordan, and Esoteric Sight, my dutiful monitors, Darian, Legions Lost, Lab Rat, Spartan0137, Jacob Kemp, Sean, Element Zero, J3, Mr. Keys, Gunslinger, Evermore, Personal Devil, Aldeas, Toxic, Scion Esports, Gem Saber, and Relentless, my diligent submonitors, my fleet of Strato Sentinels, my loyal enforcers, and all other patrons who continue to support the channel. If you want your name on the end of the video and some perks earned along the way, head over to Patreon and consider supporting the channel yourself. Big shout out to my Tier 0 Transcendent YouTube members, Spartan137, Jacob Kemp, Talia, Fenrir, Bornstella, Jimbo, and Balaz, and all the other YouTube members keeping my installation running on that glorious vacuum energy, with a special mention to the Accursed Hunter. Shout out to John due to the mathematical formula used to determine the area within a pentadodecahedron. <laughs> oh, and Lena, because that sandwich.
<laughs> and remember there are tons of ways to support the channel and keep my installation pumping out content at a breakneck speed. Much love to you all, take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain. <laughs>